Testing, testing, testing. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Testing, testing, testing. Show. Can you guys hear me? Testing, testing, testing. I'm waiting for those uh, aff affirmatives. How many people show up? What's up? Let me know if you can hear me. Leave a comment. Testing. All right, we got some people joining in. What's up? What's up? Elmo. All right, all right, let's get this going here. Okay, you can hear me good. Hello, hello, testy, testies. <laughs> can hear you good, good, loud and clear. Very cool, very cool, good. Good evening, good evening, everybody. Hope everybody is well. Everybody is well, good evening. Hey, how are you, how are you? Good. How you doing? It's been a little bit of time. I don't know, it's been about a week since I've been on. We'll get to the Q&A. Uh, Steph, my first time live. I've been enjoying your content and getting familiar with your teaching. Ah, very cool. Thanks for joining the stream. So as you guys may or may not know, I'm, uh, I'm traveling right now. This is my remote setup here. Got the little mic. Anyway, so doing good, doing good. So I'm going to answer some of the questions that were put to me. Let me turn this music down here. Hey, Boca Raton. Yeah, I was just there. A friend of mine just bought a place in Boca. So what I'll do is I'll answer a couple of questions that were put to me today, and then I'll get into the chat and I'll answer questions. Um, I assume everybody can hear me quite clearly and everybody's cool. Uncle Steph, do you know Uncle Bob? I know of him. I don't know him personally, though, so I couldn't say. Good evening, everybody. How are you? How are you? Thanks for joining the stream. I appreciate it. So... Let me read, and then we'll uh, do some Q&A. So somebody wrote to me today, considering remote distance work as a remedy to the pandemic setting, how could future employment opportunities be shaped to benefit employers, lower cost wages per employee, for example, and to benefit employees, lower living and commuting expenses? Lower cost of living and com commuting expenses, excuse me. Okay, so it's a good question. So the pandemic has basically pushed forward a trend that was already happening. And this trend was remote work. People talked about it, but, you know, large organizations, big businesses, government, they're very reluctant to change anything. So uh, the pandemic kind of forced their hand. And what a lot of people have discovered is that working from home and remote work actually works very well. So a lot of people are getting into that. So how does this affect development? It's very positive for development because there's going to be more of a need for remote tools. More and more people are going to be using things like Slack and need to create interfaces so that people could log in remotely to company, um, a company intranets, et cetera, et cetera. It's just, it's just a positive. Like the trend is going forward. The world is becoming more and more and more and more dependent on technology, information technology, which means programmers. That's what it is. I was actually talking to somebody uh, from my mentoring group today, and he's now working for an uh, organization, a uh, pretty good-sized company as far as I understand, and he's doing some very sophisticated coding, and he pointed out two things. He said, A, it's amazing how much you learn when you actually jump into a job, and that's exactly it. That's why I always tell people, you just got to learn your fundamentals, which includes the basic plus more. And then you want to get jobs as quickly as possible. Simple little jobs. you got to get your foot in the door because that's when you really learn. That's when the real learning happens. Um, but the other point he made, and it's related to all this, he didn't realize how hard it was for companies to find developers. I know you got some nerdlings will come on once in a while in the comments say, oh, jobs are hard to find. No. If you look at any statistics, you talk to any business owner, Finding good developers, finding developers is very, very difficult, very difficult. I know, I have a friend of mine, he has a company, he had 2,000 employees, 
not all of the developers, you know, a fraction of developers, but nonetheless, they have a hard time finding good people. And the story I like to relay is uh, a couple years ago when a, a big VC firm was looking to invest in a business and I was a reference, they contacted me and one of the top questions, I think it was the second question they asked me, the VC firm is located in San Francisco. They're saying, is there enough coder talent, development talent in Montreal to sustain the growth of this company that we're going to invest in? We're talking big investment, world-class stuff. And, you know, so I let them know that it was Montreal's a hub for that kind of thing. The point being, don't let anybody tell you that there's not enough jobs. There's plenty of jobs. And in fact, the number of new jobs available is increasing at a faster rate than the number of new uh, developers. So it's a great space to be in, and it will be for the foreseeable future. So the pandemic just pushes forward uh, what the trend was in terms of the development world, in that um, people can work at home. Now freelancing will become, uh, a remote freelancing will become more acceptable. Uh, remote contract work, which is different from freelancing, which become much more acceptable, and just normal remote work is also going to become more acceptable. Um, so what's the difference between contracting and freelancing? Uh, freelancing is, suggests that um, you work for, you have multiple clients, you lead and manage the projects, whereas a contractor, you work for typically a single client for a period of time, and they basically set the parameters of the work. Whereas a freelancer, you're freer. You, you decide what technologies to a certain extent. You set the schedules. Whereas when you're contracting, traditionally they would hire a contractor for three months, six months, a year, two years, depending. And then you would go work at that place or uh, at that company. And they say, okay, we need you to build this thing in Java. I've done some contract work, but most of my career when I was being paid to write code by others, it was freelancing. So yeah, I hope that answers that question. How many? Seven minutes. Okay, so good. That covers that. So I'm going to get into the Q and A. Uh, oh, by the way, okay, we got 90 people. That's cool. Uh, we only have 14 thumbs up. So for the Google algorithms, please give me the thumbs. The, we got some pretty good bokeh. So give me the thumbs. All right, appreciate that. All right, so let me just go back up, and I'm going to um, answer some questions. All right, good evening. Good, good, loud and clear, greetings. Hey, loud and clear, Uncle Steph, good, good, good. Uh, gotcha, we can hear you, all right, all right. Hello, hello, everybody. Jam and Coder, hope everything is well. By the way, this is the official salute for this channel. It's the uh, Code Long and Profit. Uh, I stole that from Star Trek. If you can do this like this, that's called single guns, and that means you're you're 50% you're nerd. If you can do double guns, you're a master nerd. It's one of the secret handshakes. Anyway. Um, Boca Raton. Yeah, I like Boca. I've been looking around. I might be moving down to South Florida sooner than you'd think. Uh, good evening. Peace, Mr. Mishuk. Hey, how are you? Steph, any advice for a programmer that wants to get a job in another country? Put up a real good website, build up a super nice resume, make sure your communication skills and the language of that country are really good. So if you want to get a job in France, make sure your French is really good. If you want to get a job in Quebec, make sure your job is your French is real good. If you want to get a job in the US, make sure your English is very good. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Hello from Morocco. Hey, how are you? Uh, Stefan, hey, how you doing, man? Uh, Bob, let's see what Bob has to say. Oh, hold on. All right. I am new. I am. Oh, hold on here. Let me just get this into view so it's a little bit more reasonable. Okay. I am now a new full stack software developer. Uh, uh, doing my studies online and look forward to start working remotely in the middle of this year. As an EU Swedish citizen, how will that pan out to get a job? Well, I don't know what the job market is in Sweden, but as I said, generally speaking, uh, the job market for development is really, really good. So, you know, just write code every day. Don't have to be crazy, you know, even 20 minutes a day just to get going, and you'll see that your skills will skyrocket. All right. Uh, let's have some more of those very fine thumbs up. 
to show some support. Hey, I appreciate that. Um, if you came for the subject, you just can rewind the stream and you can see I get into it right away. Uh, so you don't have to wait around. Hi, I do not get the feeling to work on any new personal project or new language after coming home from work is normal as a beginner in tech. Yeah, it makes sense because you're probably, it's a new job. You're a little overwhelmed, you know, ooh, new job. Ooh, you're learning all this stuff at work. So yeah, take it easy. Don't burn yourself out. Relax, relax. Trust me, you'll get into it and things will become uh, normalized for you. And uh, you should be cool. So don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, how are you, man? Mr. Mickey, the mouse. Uh, I appreciate the coverage. This man, no worries. Oh, Warrior Web works. Hope everything's well. Cheers. Uh, Nadine, good evening, Steph. What advice would you have for someone starting a new remote job? I would be, I will be the first web dev the company will have. Congratulations, cool stuff. Just um, meet expectations, meet expectations. So if you say you're gonna deliver by Friday, make sure you deliver by Friday. Uh, be, be a good communicator. Uh, be professional, and uh, yeah, congratulations. Mm. I'm still learning. It's been a long trip, but I finally got a software application developer job last month, and I'm able to work in office or remote as I choose. Congratulations, Pedro. Good job. That's what I like to hear. See, more and more people are, um, uh, more and more people are, uh, Getting jobs, coming on the streams. Yeah, cool. All right, appreciate the thumbs, everybody. Uh, you have such a positive impact. Thank you, Rossi. Hey, no problem. I'm just, I'm not blowing smoke, you know. I'm telling you what I've learned over, you know, since I've been coding since the 90s. So, uh, yeah, don't worry about it. I, I, I tell you the truth based on my experience. Not just coding experience, but business experience as well. Steph, can you adopt me as your son? <laughs> Uh, you're adopted. All right. <laughs> Hi, what are your thoughts on Fiverr and Upwork for beginner developer to gain first experience? Why not? If you can get the key to doing your first two to three free jobs, which I teach, is just to get that experience, what you make and even what the jobs actually are are not, not super important. It's more about just getting those first jobs. So do it. If it works for you, do it. Salutations from snowy lockdown Montreal staff. Black Star. Hey, hometown boy or girl. Black Star deer. I'm assuming. I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm from Montreal originally, initially. Well, I am from Montreal, but right now I'm in sunny southern Florida. Uh, yeah. I am 56 years old. Is it too late to learn to code? No. If you look on a video I did, it was about a week or two ago, two weeks ago, on, um, you know, I'm 50 and broke, should you learn to code? Go read some of the comments. There are people, uh, I got one dude, he's 80 something years old, he's learning to code. So just do it, man. Just jump in. Um, hey, Uncle Steph and everyone. Hey, how are you? Hope everybody is well. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> yes, the uh, the emoji uh, the emoji uh, guns don't count. I'll give you half 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 a nerd. I'll give you half a nerd for emoji guns. So here we go. How you doing? Good, good, good. Nice to see another. Day. Hey, Hillary, how are you? Welcome to the stream. So hello, hey Montreal, another Sabri. How are you? We well, got some uh, Montrealers on tonight. Uh, I guess there's nothing else to do in Montreal. Uh, if you want to get a job in Japan, make sure your Italian is very good. <laughs> Joseph, the creator, says, Steph, good, catch, good to catch you live again. Well, thanks for joining the stream. I appreciate it. Uh, do you believe the current trends show most employers are seeking mid-senior level developers, or is there still room for front-end developers to enter the industry? Um, front-end... Strictly has always been a little bit more difficult than full stack or back end. Uh, just as a matter of, um, you know, it's the way it is. Um, 
That being said, um, the more skills you can come into when you're looking for a job, the more skills that you can show, the better off you are. Again, follow the process I've laid out. Learn your fundamentals, build a website, go out, do two to three small free projects so you have some skills to show, and then start applying for real jobs or freelancing gigs. Your chances of getting the job will increase this much. The thing that they're looking for is just your ability to produce work. Just do that, you know, um, and there you go. Uh, that's how you get past that catch-22, right? That, uh, that where, what do I mean by that? Catch-22 means they only want to hire you if you have experience, but if you don't have experience, how can you get hired? You do that by doing the free jobs on the side. I bought your web development courses and been enjoying it so far. Cool, and thanks for buying the course. Links below, by the way. Shameless self-promo. I want to become a web developer by the end of the year. Besides your courses, what else should I focus on to obtain the goal? As I said, do my courses, finish them, and then go out and start doing real jobs. Real jobs. Just simple ones. Like if I, I like to use the boxing analogy. I would teach you how to box. I'd teach you the basics. And then I, would, uh, I wouldn't put you in the ring with Mike Tyson. I would put you in a ring with some kitten or something, a little puppy. You start there, and then you move into uh, gradually, step-by-step, step, more and more complex uh, projects. That's how I would do it. Hi, Seth. Hope you're doing well. How would you go about getting your, front and your foot into web dev industry with no experience but massive passion for coding? I just laid that out for you. You can find videos on my YouTube where I say how the steps to be getting a web design career, and you'll find it all there. All right, Victor Olvera. Hey, Stefan, I just got a job as IT support. Cool. My first day at the office, I, a place with for 250 users, but only six were present all day. I think I have to learn coding. <laughs> um, yeah. Get it? I'm telling you, my, I'm always a big believer in coding and building things more than any other type of job in the information technology world. Because when you build stuff, you coding, that's staying here for as long as for as long as your career will last. Just landed a job, hey Sean, fantastic! Congrats, congrats! See more and more people. Uh, is Hoshalag amazing? Of a good place to start my. Startup. Well, the, the rent is probably cheaper there, I would imagine. It's a new up-and-coming area of Montreal. And um, what else can you do? Yeah, yeah. so the short answer is yes, but it, I'm not sure. It's, it's a little seedy down there. So I guess if you wanted to get some uh, drugs, you can get some drugs pretty quickly. Just joking. Don't do that. It's Hoshalaga makes enough, by the way, is just kind of the... A rough part of town in Montreal, if you're going to call it that. Is learning SQL an easier way for entry into the IT field? It helps, but it helps. It depends on what you want to do specifically, but it helps. Congrats. Yeah, everybody, congrats to Sean, man. Good job. Good job. Uh, yeah, good vibes. All right. So uh, it's important, beginner, back-end engineering, to study protocols like TCP, not too much. I used to get into TCP, TCP IP, and you got to know your basics of HTTP, but don't go crazy with that. You know, that's a very specialized type of coding that you probably never have to touch on. Hey, how are you? Welcome to the stream. Uh, fellow Montrealer, transplanted in Toronto, 56 year old, and looking for a transition from admin assistant, and interested in Shopify as a freelancer. Any advice? Yeah, Patricia, just learn the basics. Do like the, you know, I would, you know, with me or anybody else, my basic web stack course, just get your head wrapped around the web stuff. And then working with Shopify or WordPress would be so much easier. Is learning still C relevant 2022 for programming skills? If you want to do C type of programming, for sure. It's still widely used. But you got to understand, C programming is very different from JavaScript programming or very different from PHP programming. Um, it's good. It's good. You can't really pick a bad language, in my opinion. You can't pick a bad language. How are we doing? Okay, good. I appreciate the thumbs, everybody. I appreciate the thumbs. 
Hi, Stefan. You work at Google. Chrome needs to be fixed. <laughs> no, I do not work at Google. Yeah, Chrome, Chrome is pretty buggy. Chrome is getting pretty buggy these days. Hello, hello. Um, John says, I have a coding interview for Facebook next month. Any advice? Yeah, just study up. There's plenty of information out there about what get Facebook is looking for in terms of their interviews. Really bone up on that. Make sure, you know, you whatever they test for, make sure you bone you bone up on that, you know. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, thanks, yeah, I keep track of all my coding stats with Rocket, rocket Time. Uh, rocket Time. I landed a job just before hitting 1,000 hours. Ah, oh, very cool. That's an interesting uh, piece of data, Sean. That's cool, man. All right, so we got doom, doom, doom. I don't see that. Boom, 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 boom. All right. Uh, hi, it's easy to find a job as a junior program for six. It's not as easy than if you were 26 or 22, but it's um, you might want to go more into freelance. And also depends if you have any domain knowledge in another area, then it would help. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I'm thinking of starting a new series. Well, I'm going to start a new series when I get back. Uh, it's going to be... Uh, Uncle Steph's your dad. Who's your uncle? Uncle Steph's your uncle or something like that. Anyway, I have to work on it. High, st high school diploma, is that needed? Not really. They don't really, if you've got skills, they don't really care what your degree is. They just care about what you can produce, you know. So I wouldn't be too concerned about that. George A. Giorgio Polis. No basic picture and a video editing in Chrome. Mm. I saw you have a course on freelancing on your website. Do you recommend it? I take it that, and if so, is it self-paced or? Yeah, it's definitely self-paced. It comes with five templates, you know, time tracker templates, the most important one. Um, it will cost you, I think it was like 19 bucks, so it ain't, it ain't exactly gonna break the bank. So yeah, you, you learn a lot. Not only you learn how to freelance, you learn how to manage projects. Uh, so it's, it's, it's all, it's video based, right? So you can take it as you need at, at any speed you want. I need a job. I got an associate's in CS. I learned, but I, but don't apply because I can't think of any ideas within the realm of, oh, let me get that back again. Uh, within the realm of what I know can learn. And that's, that's not too complex for one man. How can I get a job? What you got to do is you got to go out there and do two to three small little jobs, uh, for free. Go to a job site or something, and then uh, you will be good. Uh, that's what you should do. And you can also look at other videos I've done on my YouTube. Just search my YouTube videos. You'll find where I have a detail step-by-step how to get a job. I'm looking to train developers in Africa to prepare them for outsourcing opportunities. Is your course a good program for that? And what are your thoughts on outsourcing? Thank you. Yeah, my, my shoot me an email, Andre. My system... Like what you see in Studio Web, the front end, what students see is a very small part of it. There's all these back end tools, back office tools that I have that I we've developed to manage classrooms, including auto grading and tracking and resetting student progress, uh, removing chapters into the, into courses, into the course flow, all kinds of different tools that you would need to manage your classrooms easy. You could have one teacher and easily manage 200 students. Uh, so yeah, definitely. Yeah, outsourcing, it, 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 you know, language. I would be teaching your students how to speak the language of the target market. That will be the big differentiator. Over here in Europe, even with a CS degree, with good grades and many side projects, it's still tough to find software engineers. So realities are different here. Hmm. In Southern Florida, enjoy the freedom. Mickey says hi from Orlando. Ah, hi Mickey, how are you? Yeah, I am enjoying it. It's quite nice. I'm thinking of actually moving down here. Okay, you say you make projects, but I can't think of any within that's within range. Okay, you say to make... No, you, you, you go and you find jobs to do online. And then um, you do those jobs, and that's going to force you to learn and flex your skills. A big part about being developers, it's, it's, it's figuring out and solving problems. It's not cookie cutter. That's why you don't want to get caught up in tutorial hell. Tutorial hell is uh, 
writing code is like a fight almost. It's it's very dynamic. Very, you don't know what's going to happen. You got to you got to be able to move on the fly. Um, yeah. How do you handle learning new languages or technologies you might not have the most experience in, but job requires it to become you to become quickly proficient? It just gets easier and easier with second, third, and fourth, and fifth programming language. It becomes super easy because it's a lot of the same type of stuff, which is slightly different. So uh, you can get up and running um, after your third or fourth language. You can get up and running with a new language within a week. Uh, I'm not saying you're going to be an expert, but you're going to be able to start producing. Uh, it's, it's just work at it. Just put a little bit every day. Don't worry about it. It's part of the game. Uh, I'm starting a boot camp soon. You should check out my boot camp, my mentoring program. Links below before you spend big money on the boot camp. I dropped out of mechanical engineering. Can I still leverage some of the courses I did well in during university, e.g. critical thinking, or would it, hold on, or would it look bad on my resume not finishing? Um, I don't know. I would have to, I don't know how long you spent in mechanical engineering. And at the end of the day, as I say over and over again, um, they're going to hire you based on your skills, not so much your credentials. It's, it's the web world is very skill oriented. All right, guys, 165, 102 thumbs. I appreciate the thumbs. Let's go bump some thumbs. <laughs> mm. Tim, I'm 55 cancer survivor. Congrats. Former commercial photographer. Excited to get into the mentor program. Hey, I appreciate that. Cool. Yeah, I do uh, video work, as you can see. Um, I'm using my uh, Canon EOS R. I got a, um, it's a mirrorless camera, but I also have a cinema camera at home. I, I, it's my hobby as much as anything else. So it's cool. Again, what I discovered, of course, with videography and photography, it's not so much the equipment, it's more lighting. You know, lighting is so important, how you light, how you set your shot, that's much more important than a camera. So I have, like, this is a very inexpensive, a $1,000 uh, mirrorless camera. And my cinema camera at home, it's about $7,000. And I had a $10,000 one prior to that. And at the end of the day, it's all about lighting. This shoots very good photo, video. And I'm not even using professional lighting. I'm just using room lighting. I just, I have a better understanding of light now. Uh, so yeah, why do I mention that? Fundamentals, 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 fundamentals. Same thing with fighting. Great fighters have great fundamentals. Uh, same thing with software development. Great developers have great fundamentals. Stick to your fundamentals. What was the last personal project you made and what was that stands out you remember making? The last project I made, I guess, um, is uh, Studio Web, I suppose. Of course, that started 10 years ago. It was at version 5 now, 5.1. Uh, so I architected it. I looked over database design, I chose frameworks, I chose the external libraries, I did, I set the coding standards, I review code, but I don't do the code, data to code, day to day coding. In your career as a developer, at some point you're going to have to make that decision if you're going to go into architecture or management or stick to coding, they're all good, they're all great, but at some point you're going to have to decide which way you're going to go. There we go. All right. I'm working on a web app portfolio project to build music propositions and leaning towards vanilla JavaScript to implement UI rather than view or react. Will this look bad on potential employers? No, not necessarily, unless they're looking for view or react. But uh, vanilla is good. If you prefer vanilla, um, it's always that's a judgment call. When you're building software, um, you have your go-tos, right, depending on your taste. So you may say, I, I like Vue, or I like React, or I prefer Vanilla, or I prefer Angular. That's on the front end. Or maybe if you're back end, you say, I'm Django, or I'm, uh, no, I'm Flask, or I'm PHP Laravel, or I'm Cake PHP. You may have your defaults, but a big part of your job is to, to make uh, judgments, judgment calls about when it's time to implement this or that, where it might make sense to put in a a full MVC framework behind a site you're building or just 
do it vanilla HTML and CSS. So for example, I'm putting up a, a new site for um, the mentoring program, just to get let people know about the mentoring program. And I'm just doing it, we're just having, I'm just getting it done. We're doing it HTML, CSS, JavaScript, vanilla, no framework, because it's just really just a branding site with a, a buy option. It's, it's pretty simple. So it doesn't make sense in that situation to implement a full MVC framework. That's like, that's like bringing an 18 wheel truck if you need to move one chair, you know, that's where you get a minivan. So as a developer, you have to uh, make these judgment calls, you know. So I think I had a, uh, if I recall, yeah, I did hear a super chat. I appreciate the super chat. All right, free coffee tomorrow, fantastic. Hey, Steph, I had an idea to become an indie iOS developer. Worst case, it doesn't work out. I still learn valuable programming skills and can't pivot. Is that a good idea or naive? Many thanks. Yeah, as long as you have that backup plan, because um, uh, being an app developer is not the money train it used to be. So, yeah, but it's still be great experience. You know, again, you'd be able to show real things. And who knows? Maybe you'll get lucky. Maybe you'll hit something, you know? So do it uh, for sure. Uh, what do you think of Elementor? I have not used it. So and no bugs in Chrome, just missing components. Hey, David, how are you, man? Long time no see. I asked you a question once. Lots of water passing under the bridge. I asked you a question once. Lots of water. <laughs> okay. You're going to have to elaborate. I get a lot of questions. But hey, do you own a desktop PC? Uh, no, I own a iMac at home. Right now I'm working with uh, this, uh, which is the, the, the low-end MacBook Air. I like it because it's super thin, but it's still super powerful. Uh, what's going on? What would look at... What would look at if you wanted to go work for a startup in 2022? Work for a big company right now? I work for a big company right now. Okay. Find a startup. If you want to work for a startup, you want to do that because um, there might be some excitement in terms of growth. It could mean lots of money or it could mean, but what, what's more exciting about it is that you, you, you'll be in a very fast paced environment. And um, depending on what stage the startup is in, it will be more Wild West type of programming. So it could be kind of fun. Long hours, could, could be very long hours, though. And it could be tight deadlines, though. But if you're young and you feel like doing it, something to approach, it could be very lucrative. All the first employees of Google and Facebook and Instagram and Microsoft and Apple, they're all fabulously wealthy. So, you know, get in early. Uh, were nerds ever so well paid throughout history? Are we as software devs just lucky to live in this era? I don't know. Since the 90s, they're super well paid. I don't know before that in the 70s, uh, but I imagine so. Um, because of the demand, it's all about supply demand, you know? Because there's a perception that software development is very difficult. And for a lot of people, it is difficult because they ran into lousy courses and lousy teachers. And I'm not saying this to promote my own stuff, but it's just a fact. And it's a shame because uh, as somebody who comes from a family of teachers, it's a shame that people who want to learn how to code, they, 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 they get a bad course, they get a bad teacher, whether it be commercially or in school or whatnot. And then they find it difficult to learn and they're like, oh, this coding is not for me. But it's, it, a lot of times, it's just that, you know. Uh, from my experience, people who don't succeed as coders, it's not because of lack of intellectual capability. It's usually psychological, emotional, fear, uh, being lazy, not being consistent. Do the opposite of that. Have no fear. Don't be lazy. Be consistent. And you'll succeed. Yeah. Thanks for the thumbs, everybody. Appreciate it. Uh, hi, from Mark Frank from Zimbabwe. Hey, hey, welcome to the stream. Uh, how much is your course? Depends on the course. They start at $19.99. I got some at $39. I got some at $29. And I got my mentoring program, which is $50 a month, $80 a month, 
or uh, $7.99 for a one-time payment lifetime. So it depends on what you want to do. Hey, have you guys updated ES5 to ES6? I'm going to be adding ES6 module very soon to the JavaScript Pro course. But again, once you've done my JavaScript course, uh, you'll learn ES6 like this, you know. So many roles that can help you get a foot in the door, like website editor, webmaster, web content, web content manager, etc. Less harsh on requirements, and you can move up from there versus doing work for free. Yeah, that's also a route as well. When I'm talking about the free work, I'm not talking about doing this for six months. I'm talking about doing two to three small projects, five-day projects, 10-day projects, you know. But yeah, that also works. Stylo. Welcome to the stream. All right, how are we doing here? 36, oof, time flies. The, is mainframe programming a thing? Does it have a future? It's probably going to be around for many years. There's probably, you know, there's less opportunities, but there's so few mainframe, mainframe programmers. There's probably a lot of money in it, you know? Everything is a question of supply and demand. It's always a question of supply and demand. If there's a greater demand than supply, the price goes up. If there's more supply than demand, the price goes down. So even though there's much lower, much less mainframe work today, there's far fewer mainframe programmers. They're all retiring. So, you know, probably have some opportunity there. Uh, do you like Android development or iOS development? I think iOS is easier, but I haven't looked at Kotlin and Android. Because traditionally Android is done with Java, but Kotlin is the new language. It's light and nimble, so they're both good. Yeah. How long would it take to make money after learning to code? Depends on you. I've seen people get jobs within three months, and other people it takes more than a year. Depends on you. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Windows 10, 11, very good for web dev, lots of free tools. Yeah, Microsoft is giving away a lot of free stuff. I'm a storage engineer 12 years into it. Can I start my coding career with Python? Why not? Just jump into it, man. Do you use desktop computer or are you Mac laptop only? I have an iMac desktop and I also have my laptop for travel. Super thin, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, not going to lie, I'm making 60K, just HTML, CSS, CMS knowledge. You've got to know how to spot opportunity and just going to keep growing from here. That's it. Hey, congratulations. There you go. That's just some front end, basic front end CMS, and she's making pretty good money. So, uh, yeah. Eric says, uh, Stefan is right about learning a new language. After the third, you pick up concepts a lot faster. Yeah, this becomes, in my career as a freelancer, um, I would just walk into gigs and say, okay, what do you got to do here? And I would look at the project, and I would have no expectations about which language or technologies I would use. I would look at the project, and, okay, we should use this, or we should use that. Sometimes I'd have to go, okay, I have to consider and I would go back and I'd do some research and say, we're going to have to use this weird language here, which I never looked at before. And I would just implement it. And I would just be up to speed pretty quick. Because, you know, after your third or fourth language, just like, oh, hold on. Just like this. Easy. Can we chat on Insta? What is it? I'm not sure what that is. I said, fan, considering the current job market in the U.S., would it be wiser to study PHP, MSQL, or Node.js, Mongo for somebody trying to get into the industry? Thanks. Look at the local job market. Look at the market you want to get a job and look at that. And then you can make a decision. Um, are coding jobs hard to get for African Americans? I would say no, because um, the way the culture is today, they want to have... Uh, they want to have in their companies representatives of different cultures, different nationalities. So uh, I would say no, because uh, I think African-Americans represent about 10% of the U.S. population. So there you go. So no. I think you actually have an advantage. That's what I'm trying to say. As long as you know programming concepts, the languages come easy. Exactly, exactly. 
That's why you can't choose a bad language. People are like, oh, should I learn this? Oh, no, am I going to choose the wrong language? It's not possible to choose a wrong language. It's not possible. Not possible. Because you can always pivot from one to the next. I'm a software test analyst and mostly working on manual testing and GUI-based automation tests, tools. I have done a little bit of Java, of Java. I want to learn coding. Where should I start? Well, if you've already done some Java, maybe work on Java. Um, if you are totally doing programming from scratch, I would recommend Python or start with the web stack, HTML, CSS, and then JavaScript. HTML and CSS are not programming languages, but they are coding languages, and they teach you about logic and structure and writing code. Uh, retired pro fighter, Nell Cohen. Hey, Kevin, cool, man. MMA or uh, boxing? Okay, okay. I like, uh, I like that there's conversations going on uh, within the chat outside of uh, what we're talking about here. That's cool. Are there other areas of tech besides coding that would be good? Are there other areas of tech besides? Yeah, there's different areas. You know, it's a security and uh, DevOps uh, specialist. There's, I'm just a big advocate of coding because I think that creating is always going to be in demand, being able to create things, whereas managing systems uh, fade because the systems become more and more sophisticated and they're always working to take away the need for managers. Microsoft learns fast from others. They do. Microsoft has always been very good at creating integrated development environments. They've always been good at that, and they still are. Like VS Code is really good. How do you know you aren't good at coding? It's not for you. Well, you don't know until you jump into it for a while. When you're starting off anything new, especially something as alien as coding, it's going to be hard at first. So don't let that throw you off. At first, you're going to be sitting there and it's like, I don't understand. I was like, you got just go through the process. Go through the process. Don't give up. One day you wake up and you go, oh, I understand. That's how it works. Uh, I'm doing a management degree. Will coding be a good skill for me? Yeah, learn the basics. I would learn the basics. It's, it's very, I think it's reading, writing, math, coding. Don't have to be a master. Pick up some Python because you may need to do some automations and spreadsheets and stuff. And knowing how to code will give you a huge advantage. So for sure. Will Shopify WooCommerce lower the amount of web developers? No, it just shifts the focus. Woo and Shopify people are a different, different type of Web professional, I guess you can call them. All right, how are we doing for time? Ooh, 40 minutes. All right, we're going to be lap wrapping up. Steph, are you able to make mobile apps using Vue? Or for JavaScript, React Native, and React is the only option for making mobile. You can make mobile with uh, web tech using PWA, or you could just do simple responsive websites many times, or you could do a Flutter, or you can do React Native. So you got lots of options. Do you keep a light in front of your computer? I don't know. Why do you ask? I mean, Flare has 135 GitHub, 135K GitHub stars, and React Native only 10. I like Flutter. I haven't looked at it in a while, but I liked it when I first saw it. I wanted to start freelancing for local businesses. Would you suggest registering an LLC first? Now, that's um, more of a local legal consideration. I would just contact a bookkeeper and ask them that. Uh, typically, uh, no. Uh, you only want to you register limited liability corporations when you want to limit your liability. The thing is, when you're a developer, it's, like, it's not like a brick is going to fall on people's heads, right? So the chances of you getting sued are next to none. So maybe start off, because LLCs are more expensive to set up, and they're more expensive to maintain because of the accounting. All right, I think uh, I'm going to sign off. It's been 45 minutes. I'm trying to cut these down. So many questions. See if I find any last ones. So let me know if you like this. Um, 
Give me a thumbs up. I'll answer a few more and then heading out. Steph, is Java or C Sharp a good language to learn for both business and freelance work? I'm looking at both avenues to get employed by employer and to freelance as well. I would go WebStack, William, because Java and C Sharp are generally speaking, the, uh, uh, they're in large organizations, but freelance, it's more about the WebStack, which is going to be HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP. So I would do WebStack for you. Why Mac and not Windows? I, always, I, I have a Windows machine. I have a Surface Pro, but I just prefer Mac OS personally. It's a personal choice, but they're both fine. They're both fine. What are good ways to find clients for freelancer projects? Ah, you can find previous videos where I talk all about this. As you mentioned, Java is a traditional way to go in Android development. Kotlin is something new. And what about Flutter? Uh, what is Flutter? Dart? I think Flutter is Dart. I forget now. Uh, have you considered working for corporate ever? I did once, and I'll leave with a story. It was 1998. So um, a very important company in Montreal, famous company, was looking for what they called the webmaster. That was the term at the time. Somebody would manage their whole website infrastructure and so forth. So I went in for the interview at a, because of a recommendation. And they were introducing me to the heads of the different departments. And within like 20 minutes, they started getting a feel for the corporate culture that didn't, I did not like. So halfway through one of the interviews, I said, all right, this interview is over. And they said, what? We're not done. I said, no, no, we're done. And I left. And that was my only time I ever considered a job. It was a very cool company, but... Uh, uh, the people, I was not impressed with the culture and the people. So I said, bye-bye. Because I was used to being, I, I have, last time I had a job working for somebody, I was a bouncer in a nightclub. So I'm kind of used to my own autonomy. So it was very difficult for me to want to work in that environment. Hmm. All right, guys. Thanks for joining in. I appreciate it. Thanks for, I appreciate the thumbs. If you like this type of content, please give me a thumbs and share this video. It's good for the algos. And uh, we'll see you soon. I think in the next stream, I might be in Texas. I'm heading down to Austin, Texas. I've never been, so I'm excited. I'm going to meet a few people there. And uh, that's about it. All right, ciao. Um, I don't know if my ASMR is. Do I have my ASMR here? No, I don't. All right, that's it. We'll see you in the next, uh, next stream.